Hey, hello, everybody. Hello, all of you. Hello to you, and you, and you too. You especially, especially you. I, I, I want you to come out back later by after the show is over. And I also hello to you, and hello to you also. Not, not you. you. You can go fuck yourself. You can go fuck off. Go away. But hello to you, and you, and a very fine how did he do to you also. So, why am I saying hello? Because the show has begun. And what show is that, you ask? Well, it's Gravit Talk, where I, Gravit John, talk about the latest movies to be splattered across the silver screen. And this week, that film in question is The Guardians of the Galaxy. And, um, oh my, and he, 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 here's where I have an issue. You see, I have this particular tragic bias for uh, superhero films. And unfortunately, I sh that bias reared its ugly little herpes infected head in our uh, Captain America 2 review. And, I, I, and the bias took me over and, and then I got a slap in the face in the uh, in the Spider-Man 2 Amazingness review and it, and then I had an epiphany and I recovered and was more down to earth with the uh, X-Men future of the past days movie and, and there I had less of a bias. There I tried to look at it as a film and not let my bias take over and, and that bias that I have against superhero films is that they is that they show us supervillains in a negative light and they make the superheroes look all positive and, and they look like positive role models and whatnot and I'm like that's bullshit but I have to remind myself that it's just a movie and I am a fictional character like that poor said and when the hell is he gonna get his movie but it's not the point the point is that uh, is that uh, this movie in particular doesn't really feel like a superhero film? It's just a bunch of it's just a bunch of uh, space travelers going on wacky, kooky, fun alien adventures. And uh, in, and if you're going to call that a superhero film, then you might as well call Star Wars a superhero film. And that doesn't have any superheroes. It's just a bunch of, you know, space travelers, wacky fun, cookie fun, alien adventure, that kind of thing. So, with that in mind, my uh, superhero bias isn't going to be a problem, hopefully. Did, did you get any of that? Uh, Dr. Jenning? Um, no, I, I, I don't think I did. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to, uh, to, uh, introduce you to my good friend, uh, Walter Jenning. I, I've never met you before in my life. We are both doctors and scientists. So? There's plenty of doctors and scientists who have never met each other. We Listen, the point is, Mr. Jenning, Dr. Jenning, okay, Dr. Jenning, Dr. Walter Jenning, uh, you see, I do this review show with, where I talk about movies, uh, this week is Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, have you seen it? Oh, uh, no, I'm afraid I have not. Do you, well, why not? Because I've had a very bad experience with atropomorphic animals in the past, and I don't want to talk about it. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about how- Ah! Oh, la 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 la! I can't hear you! I can't hear you! La 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 la! Okay, I promise not to bring up how- Yeah, la 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 la! I, I don't I have no idea what you're saying. I have no idea what you're saying. Okay, crazy weirdo. 
The point is, I do this with super villains. And Jay, we have a very nice community here. But that's the problem. I'm not a super villain, and I have not seen this movie. So I, as you can see, I am not qualified to um, participate here. So if I could be just like politely l let out of here, like, can someone please show me the way out of this studio, please? Nope. Oh, well, why not? I just told you, I have no qualifications to be here. I'm not a supervillain, and I have not seen this movie. Well, I know someone who is a supervillain, and from what I understand, they have seen the movie that I'm about to review. Really? Who is it? Why, it's my good friend, the Dark Overlord of the Universe. Ah! Ah! Wait, 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 wrong. Dude, oh my gosh. Uh, how could you? How could you summon him? Well, he said he was available, and he really wanted to uh, review this with me for some reason. But the last time he was on Earth, he possessed my body. Yes, he viola violated you, didn't he? Yes, he he put. Not only did he put his penis in you, but he put his whole entire body in you. Yes, and that was a very traumatic experience. Okay, it was horrible, and I don't want to have to go through that experience again if he comes back. Well. You see, here's the thing. He said that the only way he can come back is if he gets inside a uh, human host again. No! Oh my god! What, what kind of horrible mistake have you done? And he said that he uh, would only be comfortable going into the uh, human body that he has the most experience with uh, handling. And that is you, my good friend, sir! No! Not that again! Horrible memories. I refuse. I refuse to do this. Well, too bad because he's coming in five, four, three. Oh, God! No! Hey, Walter Jinning? Walter Jinning? You okay? Walter Jinning? Walter Jinning? Hello! Oh, 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 good, you blacked out for a minute. Oh, what, what happened? Well, there was a, there was this uh, sound, and then all of a sudden you uh, passed out. Oh my gosh, I can feel him inside of me again. Oh, he feels disgusting. Oh, oh. Okay, good. That means we can start the review. No, <laughs> I can feel him inside of me. Oh, oh, bringing back bad memories. Except this time I'm not at some weird diner. Oh, bad. Uh, Walter Jennings, are you still in the building? No. Oh boy, you know what that means. Are you the Dark Lord? Yes! Hooray! I got the Dark Lord in my shoe! Pleased to meet you, Dark Lord. Ah, it is not an honor to be here. Well, too bad. You agreed to. Yes, there is a particular point, subject in this movie that I need to address. Good, because I'm about to review it. And will you be so kind to help me? Yes, I will help you. I will help you see, review the movie. Good. Okay, let's do it then. Yes, let's. Yoki doki. Uh, so what were your initial thoughts on the movie? Yeah, I have no interest in talking about the rest of the movie. Just one particular subject. 
Okay. I'll, 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 I'll give my thoughts then. Yes, you will. Okay. Well, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, it is the, uh, wait, wait, how, how many have we had now? The, uh, oh, holy crap, the tenth movie. This is the tenth movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Is, is, is that correct? I don't know. Okay, let me, let me, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's go back and review the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, real quick first. No! We should get to that subject. Now, hold on. We will get to that subject when we get to the subject. First, let's review. First, there was the Iron Man movie, which jump-started this new craze in Marvel films. Um, then there was the, the, the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, which put it back into the slump. And then there was Iron Man 2, which slightly took it out of that slump. And then there was the Thor and Cap, which, uh, which uh, pushed it out of the slump a little bit. And then, the, and then uh, there was uh, the Avengers, which, uh, which, uh, which took it back to the all-time high. We're at an all-time high. Yes, that's when the superhero craze really got all kicked off. It's just when everyone was all crazy about the super villain movies. Uh, superhero movies, I mean. And they were all like, oh, we love superheroes. Da, da, da. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, Graviton, focus. Focus on the movie. Don't, don't be all biased about it. Okay, so after the Avengers movie, then came Iron Man 3, which sucked and put it back in the slump. Then came a uh, Thor, which slightly took it out of that slump. And then came Captain America, which completely well, brought it back to that all-time high. We were at an all-time high. And now we have Guardians of the Galaxy. And what did that do for this uh, big old multimedia franchise? Why, it continued that high. Oh, really? Yes, Mr. of the Universe. It did. This was a really good film, from my opinion. It was really light-hearted. And, and it, well, by light-hearted, I mean that it wasn't dark. I mean, it was still adult, like, there's a whole bunch of sex jokes and adult jokes, and it's like, oh, 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 ejaculation. But the point is, uh, this movie, you, you see, after dealing with Cap, which uh, we had some, a lot of dark issues, this brought it back to uh, the comic settings. And a lot of people have criticized that the most recent uh, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe films have gotten too, they've relied too much on comedy. Like, first there were the Avengers, which had a reasonable amount of comedy, and then they were like, okay, let's do this with uh, Iron Man 3 and Thor completely. And the thing was, with those movies, they were advertised as these dark movies, like, coming soon, Iron Man 3, he might die, it's the end for him, or... Coming soon, Thor 2. People will die. Maybe not Thor, but it's still gonna be dark and depressing. And then when the action movies came out, uh, in reality, instead of being like that, they were like this. Oh, <laughs> it's so funny. I'm Iron Man. I'm, I'm stupid. I, I do clumsy things. Oh, look at my Iron Man suit getting all messed up. <laughs> I'm not, I didn't say. I'm not the hero of the film, it's my girlfriend. Plappy ploopy ploopy. And Thor was like, Oh, hee hee, I'm Thor. The lappy dappy dappy. Oh, there are so many things are happening. I'm going through portals. This is like the climax of the, of the Monsters, Inc. <laughs> oh, look at, look at that, that annoying girl, Darcy. Isn't she so important to the plot because she's funny? Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm going to give her all the screen time in this movie, even though she doesn't need it at all. <sighs> Do you get what I'm getting, saying? No. Okay. What I'm saying is that the last few films have relied too much on comedy and not enough on seriousness and action. But uh, 
Captain America 2 didn't do that. It didn't rely too much on comedy. I mean, sure, there were co comedic elements, but it wasn't too comedic. It was still serious at times. Whereas this movie, now here's the thing, this movie kind of breaks that point. Because you see, it, it made me realize that some movies need to give a fuck. What the hell do you mean? I mean, some movies need to really try. And some superhero movies, I mean, need to really try and take this superhero shit seriously. But not all of them. Thor and Iron Man 2 are the kind of movies that needed to give a fuck. But they didn't. And the thing is, Guardians of the Galaxy does not need to give a fuck. And you know why? Why? Because main characters include a rock talking raccoon and a talking tree. And the thing is, when you have a movie that are about those kinds of characters and being in the outer space and whatnot, you do not at all are required to take this completely seriously. If this movie was done like a Dark Knight picture, uh, people would be like, why the hell are they taking this seriously? Well, why do we need to be all dark and depressing about a raccoon in a tree? But you know what this movie does? It does not care about being too serious. It's okay for them to be funny. So what I'm getting at is that some of these MCU films need to be more serious, but others don't have to. And this one doesn't have to. So it has the freedom to be all silly and kooky and wild. You know what I mean? No. Man, you really want to just get to that particular point, don't you? Yes! Okay. What the point is, um, this film is the correct tone that it needs to be, and that it's very lax, and uh, a lot of comedic timing is involved, and it's very s weird and kooky, but it can still be serious at times, and it is, and it feels balanced. You know what I mean? No. Okay, well, shut up then. I will. Man, you, you, you were turning out not to be as good of a guest as I thought you would. Just get to the point. Okay. Well, now that I'm done talking about um, my uh, initial, you know, my initial thoughts going in, uh, let's get uh, let, let let let's get cracking onto this uh, uh, onto the recap where we break the film down. Let's. You okay? All right. So. The beginning of the movie. Earth, 1988. Yes. Now here's the thing. When when the movie starts, uh, the first thing you expect are the movie logos. But instead of that, it's like boom, already in the movie. Earth, 1988. Like whoa, 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 whoa! What the hell, movie? You you you're being too fast. Slow down. We're already in the movie. We are, we're, we're already in a movie scene where this kid is listening to his Walkman in, in a hospital and he's all like, Oh, I love this song, even though, like, even though he's not, like, the right age range for it. Whatever. The quicker we get into the movie, the better. Okay. So, um, the boy's grandpapa comes and lets you know, like, Son, or grandson, you are a superhero. You are going to be a superhero someday, and one of the uh, and one of the necessities in being a superhero is having a dead parent. And guess what, son? You are about to have a dead parent. Congratulations! You are one step closer to being a superhero. Yes. His mother is dying. How comedic. Whoosh! 
Slow down there, Dark Overlord. Why are you so morbid about that? I am above you. I don't give a shit whether any of you die or live. Okay. So anyway, uh, he goes to the hospital bed where we see a whole bunch of family members. And we see <laughs> the little boys. <laughs> His dying mother. And she's all skinny and she's hard of breathing and she's bald. And I'm like, oh my gosh, does she have cancer? No way, this is the 1980s. Which means it's AIDS. Oh no, she's dying of AIDS. If only she lived two decades longer. Oh. So anyway, um, so she's about to die and she says, Peter, with great power comes, that's the wrong superhero. Well, I'm just, sorry, I'm just trying to point out the fact that his name is Peter. <laughs> Because that's the same name as a, another popular superhero. You know which one I'm talking of about, of course. Peter Petrelli. So anyway, uh, so, uh, so, so Peter's AIDS mom is about to die, and she tells him, and, and she also has a southern accent for some reason, uh, Babe, he, here's a present. Now, now, Papa, you put you put that present in his uh in his uh backpack so he can uh wait till he's uh and you it's to, and so he can wait till the end of the movie to open it. And, and Grandpa's like, wait, why would he not wait that long to open the present? That dick. Anyway, the point is, so the Grandpapa puts his present and the Walkman nice and safely in in um. In Peter Quill's backpack. That's convenient. Yes, and we will and we will clarify why it's convenient in a few minutes. But the point is, so then she asks him to take her hand and he doesn't and then she dies and he is sad and she <laughs> Get yourself together, Graviton! Okay, sorry, sorry, but the point is, like, he was about, he, the point is, she was reaching for her, she wanted her to, she wanted him to grab her hand, and he didn't, and she died that second. Wow, God, way to be a dick about that. Like, oh, ho, ho, I'm gonna kill her right at this point. Ding. So the point is, so now she's dead. And, uh, and, uh, and Peter Quill is now hysterical, he's screaming and, 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 and whatnot, and, uh, and Quill's father pushes him away and is, and is, and is like, calm down, Quill, I know your mom just died, but please, now, 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 you stay over here, and I'm gonna ho have to deal with the, with the family over there. So, so he does, leaving him a, completely alone, and I'm like, dude, the kid's mother just died, you're just gonna leave him alone like that, you, 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 you dick papa? And, and, and that causes Quill to be all crazy, and he, and he runs from the hospital, and he runs away, and, and then he's abducted by freaking aliens. Yes. Yep. Imagine if someone saw this movie for the first time. They would be thinking that this was a Hallmark movie for some reason. And then all of a sudden, nope, alien abduction takes Quill away. And then we finally see the logos. Yes, the logos. Yes, the Marvel logo, which is really long now. And they put a lot more effort into it to let you know, like, hey, this is Marvel. So right off the bat, they do something very different from the other cinematic films. The, the cinematic uh, universe films. The, it, it, it's like they're saying, like, hey, we're going to do this film. This is going to be a little bit different than the others. Right down to the beginning. We're not even going to show the logos at first. We're just going to show this cold opening first. And then the logos. And now it has been uh, 26 years. 
Yes, it has been a long time since he was abducted. Yes, so for all we know, uh, he was declared missing and declared dead a long time ago back on Earth. And you see, a lot of people will probably forget the fact like, holy shit, like this family, I mean, they just lost... They just lost a family member with that mother, but now they lost the mother's son too? What the fuck? Like, that, that family, like, like, holy shit, why doesn't Peter Quill ever think to himself, like, like, holy shit, my, not only did my family lose my mother, but they only, but they also lost me too. I should, like, let them know that I'm alive or something. Oh well, never addressed. So anyway, uh, we cut to a a faraway planet, a, 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 a very far away. It's an alien planet that makes no sense. We will. Why doesn't it make no sense? There's no such thing as an alien planet. Oh, that's right. If an alien is its in is in its own world, then it's not an alien. And and if you are from Earth and you go to that world, then you're the alien, right? Yes! Good. I, I finally accomplished my Illegal Immigrants 101. I too am an alien from Canada! So anyway, uh, we, we see this um, ship that looks not too dissimilar from the ship that abducted the little boy. And uh, out comes this red trench coat wearing helmeted man. And he looks all mysterious and dark. And then he goes to um, this ancient temple, and he opens it up, and he goes inside, and then he takes out his Walkman and listens to it. And be and believe it or not, this is where it is revealed to us that this is that little boy all grown up, and he still has his Walkman. That's pathetic. Well, it's not pathetic as it is, like, uh, confusing or weird, because to me it's like, wait a minute, you had this Walkman this whole time for, uh, two and a half decades, and, and, and never once did you ever get sick of hearing all those songs played over and over again? My gosh, if I was, if, if I was in his shoes with access to those songs being played over and over again, I think I might lose it. I might lose my sanity. Like, oh, oh, I'm so tired of listening to Cherry Bomb. Jesus Christ. Ooh, child. Things are not getting better because I have to hear this song again. Ooh, child. I really hate this song because I've heard it a bajillion times over and over again throughout the decades. So anyway, but the point is... Once he turns on that song to listen to it, boom, blam, out comes the big ass Guardians of the Galaxy title, right out the gate. And what that tell, and, and and with this opening sequence where they show like all the credits for the main actors and you know all the keys and whatnot, uh, what it shows us is it establishes the tone for this movie and the part before the logos didn't really establish that tone it was more like all serious and sad but then this was was what the tone is really going to be it's like them telling the audience like yeah we know we just showed you this really heart-wrenching uh scene but that's not how this movie is this is how the movie is and how is the movie they don't give a fuck. That's right. They don't. They no longer give a fuck what you think. They don't care. It's like you know what this movie's about: a raccoon and a talking tree. So if we're going to be silly, then by God, we're going to go all the way. So we have, so we have Peter Quill like skipping and he's hopping up and down with the music and he's going around dancing and he's kicking the little alien. Uh, the little alien blizzards, and he's having a good old time, and it's like, yeah, good, go, Peter Quill, you go ha not ha give a fuck. That's the uh, kind of tone we need to establish. So he's going around, you know, skipping, 
dance into this song, and then he finally gets inside of the uh, temple, and there we see the and, and there we see an Indiana Jones type scene where he's about to take this uh little orb thing, and 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 he takes it, but then he he, he is caught. This is exactly like Indiana Jones. Well, they're probably doing, like, an homage, if you will. Because, uh, you know, Indiana Jones was popular and whatnot. Whatever. So anyway, uh, he is captured by, uh, what I come to understand are Sakarins? Scarins? Sakarins. You know, the planet where, uh, Hulk did, did, did that, uh, John Carter thing and whatnot in the comic books. Probably not in the movies, so stop harassing James Gunn about that. So anyway, um, the Sicarians are, by le are led by Korath. And in the comic books, Korath is a blue person. And in this movie, he is a black person. So, uh, Korath is like, who, who are you? And uh, here comes that famous, you know... That scene that's in all the tra trailers, you know, where he's like, Oh, I'm Star-Lord, and Korath is like, it's like, who? And and we're supposed to be fun, and it's supposed to be funny because, you know, that's the, the joke is that no one actually knows who Star-Lord is, even if they've read comic books. And I, and I will admit, uh, the, the, there are a lot of people out there who never heard of these characters before this movie was announced. And that was the point. It was like, let's take a bunch of unknown characters that no one has ever heard of and let's give them a movie and and show people that we Marvel Studios are capable of taking even the most obscure ass shit and make it famous and popular and that's what they did with with these characters like Star Lord so after that joke Star Lord uh, mentions uh, the movie that I have next week, and then he goes on an epic space chase scene where he uses his um his his jet his his jet pack on his feet on his boots to escape and make his heroic uh, his hero his heroic exit from Kurath with the orb. So he gets into his uh, ship and then he flies away and. And and Korath and his uh his Sakarin buddies are like cursed you gadget, and and uh, and we find out that uh, and, and and we find out that uh, that that uh, we hold on let me let me try this again. Why do you keep stuttering and not get to the point? Sorry, I'm trying to find myself. Gosh. So anyway, we find out that Star-Lord is quite the ladies' man because he has some pink chick in his uh, ship that he forgot about. And it's like, oh, get it? He's kind of like Kirk in that he's a womanizing douche who doesn't care about women. Yes, she's even wearing his shirt from when he was a child. Yeah, that was kind of fucked up. Like, dude, what? That that represents your childhood and you're letting this... This this chick wear it? What the hell? So anyway, uh, it turns out that uh, Star Lord is a member of a group of of uh, thieves and stealers, kind of like Han Solo. So basically, uh, Star Lord is like a cross between Han Solo and Kirk, uh, James T. Kirk. And that is a good combination in my book. Ah, it's cliche. Why doesn't he? Why does? Why is he not based off of a combination of other uh, less mainstream sci-fi characters? Well, why don't you name them then? Shut up. Okay. So anyway, uh, so anyway, he's a part of the Ravagers. This, you know, team of intergalactic bandits. And uh, and the, the and this team is being led by Yandu, who is basically Burrow from The Walking Dead, except blue, 
because he he he's he's played by the same actor who plays Merle and uh, and he has the same exact uh, personality verbatim. This is Blue Merle, everybody. So anyway, uh, Blue Merle, the 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 or or should I say Yondo? I don't want to lose my comic book geek cred. Yondo, uh. Although I'd still be a comic book geek because it's Walking Dead, which is a comic book. Okay, back to the movie. So anyway, uh, Blue Merle, a.k.a. Yandu, with uh, the metal mohawk in place of the giant-ass fin. Why didn't they keep the fin? I don't understand why it was such a hassle to put a fin on him. The, this big-ass, like, Merlin fin. And instead, they're like, nope, he's just going to have a mohawk. A metal mohawk. I don't understand that either. So anyway, the point is, uh, Blue Merle, aka Yandu, is really pissed at Star Lord because he hasn't uh, returned because he because he got the uh, he stole the orb uh, not under uh, Yandu's appro approval. So Yandu is is like, boy, you get a, you better give me back that egg. No, you, wait, egg? Why do I keep calling an egg? I'm sorry. Orb. Give me back that orb, is what he's saying. And, uh, and Star-Lord is like, yeah, whatever. But, but, but Star-Lord isn't going, isn't planning, is not planning on return, on giving the orb to Yandu. He's planning on selling it on Xandar. Yes, Xandar. But... Let's move on from there and talk about the villain. Yes, this movie has a villain. And that villain rides a giant-ass black Twizzler. And inside of this giant black Twizzler is a naked blue man taking his black bubble bath. And after he is done with his uh, black bubble bath, he puts on his clothes. Not before people throw powder on him for some reason. That's how people get... That's how some people get cleaned up. They throw powder on them. Oh, that's right, I saw Shawshank, never mind. So anyway, the point is, uh, so he has these servants who help him not get naked, not be naked anymore by putting on his clothes. And who is this villain that who took this naked bubble bath to put on his clothes by these people? Why, it's Ronin, the Accuser, a notorious evil warlord amongst the Marvel Universe, an individual I respect very much, and I hope to get him on the program very soon. Good luck with that. Hey, stop being so pessimistic. So the point is, uh, so the point is, uh, Ronin he is a fanatic for Kree. He he used to be a part of Kree, but Kree uh, signed a peace treaty with Xandar. But Ronan did not agree with this peace treaty. His his attitude upon Xandar is like fuck Xandar. They need to die. So he went rogue, and now he's teaming up with Thanos. And who is Thanos? Who is Thanos? Who is Thanos? Why, Thanos is an even bigger, even more notorious villain amongst the Marvel Universe, more than Ronin. And, and while I would be honored for him to be on this program too, that probably won't happen because he's too high profile. Oh, yes, that is correct. You don't have any high-profile villains, do you? Like Joker, or Loki, or even Bane. One can dream, maybe someday, if I've got enough recognition, I can get the big boys on here. The p playing with the big boys now. Playing with the big boys now. Shut up. Okay, sorry. Uh, so anyway, so, so, the, so, uh, Thanos has agreed to destroy, uh, Xandar for Ronin, only if Ronin, uh, gives him, 
retrieves to him uh, one of the, the the orb. Ah, yes, this is where it all comes to play. Yes, this is how the orb is important for the movie because uh, Thanos needs it, and and uh, Thanos has granted Ronin uh, two voluptuous uh, killer babes. Two femme fatales, if you will. One is a blue babe named Nebula, played by that Doctor Who girl. Which Doctor Who girl? There's several of them. Uh, the Amy Pond one. Ah, the redhead. Yes, the redhead. But she has no redhead here because all that red has been shaven off. She's a blood. She's a bald blue blade. Blue. blue, 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 blue the, the tongue twister. She's a bald blue babe. There we go. You say that three times fast. Bald blue babe. Blah, blah, blue. I already fucked up the first try. Never mind. So anyway, uh, Nebula is also a cybernetic chick on top of being a blue babe. And uh, that's the first voluptuous babe. The uh, second voluptuous babe is, uh, is Gamora. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, that giant... Th that giant ass uh, turtle that everyone wants to fight Godzilla, but they don't know that uh, Gamora is is owned by a different company than Godzilla. So that's like asking Spider Man to fight Superman. No, not that Gamora. A uh, different Gamora. A, a green babe. And this green babe is not cybernetic, but she is still a badass in her own right. And uh, she offers. To uh, to uh, find whoever he has the orb and bring it to bring it to uh, Ronin, and so uh, she goes off to uh, find the orb. But wait a minute, the orb is with Quill, and Quill is at Xandar. You know what that means. It's time to uh just to uh, look around Xandar. And it's all beautiful. It's like this beautiful utopia. Everything is cool and awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Shut up! You did not create this video to sing a stupid Lego song. You are here to review this movie. Okay, sorry, thanks for putting me in my place. Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, getting back to the movie before someone blows a gasket. Tee hee. Um, so we see, uh, Xandar from a person's perspective, but we don't know who that perspective is. And of course, during this time, we, uh, we get the standard uh, Stan Lee cameo, where he's like, Oh, rock! I'm Stan Lee. I can get ladies, and you can't. You are pathetic, and I can get ladies even though I'm almost 100. And, um, well, that was a horrible impression. But anyway, so we finally see who this point of view is from, and it's a talking raccoon. Yes. Ah, talking animals. I hate them. Yes. You seem to hate talking animals with burning passion. Because I think you've had a bad experience with one. Don't bring up that stupid animal ever again. I'm oh, sorry. I think I hit a fuse. Just like with uh, Walter Jennings, huh? You guys both seem to have the same problem. Whenever I bring up a particular... Shut up! Okay. Just saying you have a lot in common with Walter Jennings. So anyway, uh, to raccoon, a so a rocket raccoon, or as he prefers to be called, just rocket, is a experimented on upon raccoon that was taken apart and then put back together as a a soldier. Except he doesn't do that soldier bullshit. He goes around as a bounty hunter and. And his uh, partner in crime is a giant-ass talking tree. How come they go 
so far to explain everyone else's backstory and origins, but not the tree. Oh, right, the Groot, the talking tree. Well, uh, it's probably because Groot's origin is so wacky and stupid that they thought, nope, too much for this movie. Yeah, we, but we don't need it anyway. It's like, look, this is a, this is a, an intergalactic universe. So if there's a talking tree, you're whatever, it's an alien. So anyway, uh, Groot and Rocket find out that, uh, are looking, Groot and Rocket are looking for criminals to have as bounty. And one of those criminals they find. And that criminal, criminal, Criminal is Star Lord. Oh no, they're gonna capture Star Lord. He already, he he's already being hunted by a uh, Gamora. Now he's being hunted by a cuddly woodland creature and a plant. Oh no. So anyway, a uh, Star Lord is ignoring all that shit, and he is. And he's at some kind of uh, antique shop where uh, he talks to this uh, dealer. And this dealer is uh, Mr. Porcupine Face. And Mr. Porcupine Face uh, tries to make a transaction with him for the orb until he finds out that that Ronin wants the orb. And he's like, no, 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 I cannot make a transaction that involves Ronin. I am not going to get my ass killed. And Star Lord is what, like, what? He, he, Ronin is notorious and whatnot? If he's so notorious, then why have I never heard of him? Just shut up, expedition, so, so I can explain to you, so the audience can be explained to, too. Shut up. So Porcupine Face uh, kicks him out of the the, the um, antique store, and, uh, but then G Gamora shows up, and Gamora is like, is like, oh, hey, Quill, you look so cool. Uh, fuck you, I'm taking the orb, and, 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 uh, and Star Lord is like, hey, what the fuck? Give me that bad orb. So anyway, they have this public battle and whatnot, the big big ass fight against the orb. And and then and then Groot and Rocket get involved in the fight. And it's like this three way battle. But they're not having a three way. That would be sexy and weird. I I, I mean I mean just a three way battle, like a me Mexican standoff. Ta -da -da! Wah, wah, wah. But then they get broken up by the police, the space police. But they're not called the space police. No, they're called Nova, which is very popular in the comic books. They're basically Marvel's version of Green Lantern, except it's except it's not as much about magic as it is just you know actual police force. And uh, so they're taken to the. Zendarian base and where they will be transferred to a faraway prison. So they are taken by John C. Riley, aka Wreckit Ralph. And Wreckit Riley is is establishing their characters for the trailer. But I'm like, but we already had the trailer, so we don't need this. So anyway, they are taken to a to to the prison where they get stripped naked and uh, are given their clothes and they're washed thoroughly and whatnot. And I'm like, God damn it! Why didn't you show Gamora? You only showed, you only sh you only showed Star Lord getting naked and given a bath, and you showed you showed Rocket getting a naked and having a Beth, I'm not interested in seeing raccoon nudity, just human nudity, and, and Gamora is close to human nudity. So why didn't you show her naked scene? Also, why didn't you show Groot's naked scene? Whoa, what, what the fuck? Shut, shut up! Ignore that I said that. I think I just revealed something about you. Go back to reviewing the movie. Okay. I think I just found out something kinky about you. Shut up! Okay, so anyway, uh, 
So they so they go around the uh, prison and we and we get an establishing shot of this prison where we see all the people, uh, you know, socializing and 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 this uh, big fat lady is is talking to her uh, to her family via Skype and it's very you know all these people and I heard beforehand that uh that. That Nathan Fillion has a cameo in this movie. And people were like, oh, I'm so excited. I wonder who Nathan Fillion is playing. I bet it's a major comic book character. Like like Richard Ryder or Adam Warlock. I can't wait to find out who he's playing. And who is he playing, ladies and gentlemen? Some nameless blobby in inmate. That's disappointing. Uh, yeah, but... But think of it this way, maybe Marvel is planning on using uh, Nathan Fillion for a later project, but they don't want to use him now. But James Gunn was like, hey, I want him to be in this movie because I like uh, Nathan Fillion and I've, and I've had him in my movies before. So they were like, okay, but as long as he's covered in CGI. So they made him this big blobby man, this big uh, gelatinous man who uh, Rocket makes him his bitch. He, he makes him Groot's bitch. So I'm like, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You finally have Nathan Fillion in the in a Marvel movie as Groot's bitch. So anyway, uh, every all the inmates are really pissed at Gamora because everyone knows that she is in cahoots with Thanos. Speaking of Thanos, he's been uh, mentioned a whole lot in this movie, but we haven't seen him yet. In fact, the last time we saw him in the movies was two years ago, where he had this silent cameo in the Avengers, and everyone's like, where's Thanos? How come Thanos is not here? Why is he not the villain of, of Avengers 2 in, instead of Ultron? What's going on? Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, he is in the movie for a few minutes. Ah, more disappointment. But this is understandable disappointment because Thanos, uh, the, y y y y you see, uh, Thanos still has a very big presence in this movie. He's the one who starts all of this mess. He's the big mastermind. So he barely gets to do a thing, though. And But, but, but at least they actually show him, for a little bit anyway. They show... Uh, what they do is they show Ronan and Thanos' daughter, Nebula, go to Thanos. And we finally see Thanos in all his glory being motion captured by James Gunn's brother, being voiced by young Agent K and... Uh, wait, Agent J or Agent K? Does it matter? You yeah, whatever. He's, the point is he's voiced by Jonah Hex. Anyway, uh, Jonah Hex Thanos is uh, really pissed at Ronin for not picking up the slack, and also because he killed the other the other what? The other! Other what? You know, the other from, from the Avengers. Other what? <sighs> he, it's a character called the other. Oh, that's confusing. Oh, don't worry, you don't have to be confused anymore because uh, Ronin kills the other. Other what? Oh, the point is, the other is dead. Other what dead? Oh. So anyway, uh, that ends our scene with Thanos. Bye, Thanos. See you in the next movie where you probably will also have just a few minutes long of a scene. The point is, we're all, we, it's going to build up. I, I bet the more we see Thanos, the, the longer his scenes are. Up to the point where he's the big bad in, hopefully, Avengers 3. I've heard that people want Avengers 3 to be Civil War. Fuck that. They, they, with all this setup they're doing with the... Uh, with the Infinity Gems, it seems more likely that Avengers 3 will be the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Because not only has there been a lot of setup so far in this cinematic universe, but also in this movie coming up. So, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, back to the prison. Uh, 
we soon we're back to the prison, uh, Gamora gets confronted by by a big green wrestler man, Batista, also known as Drax, the Destroyer. Ah, so finally we have the whole all of the Guardians. Yes, the the Guardians has five members, and so far we've only seen four of them. Now we finally get our fifth member, Drax, who wants to kill Gamora. But the Queen tells him, now hold on, Gamora, you could kill Gamora, because, but let me backtrack for a minute. The reason why uh, Drax wants to kill Gamora is because uh, she works for Rodin. And Ronan uh, killed Drax's family. You mean Moon Dragon? Well, she's not called Moon Dragon, so I guess it's a character that isn't called Moon Dragon. I'm not sure if it is Moon Dragon or not. Let's just wait for the sequel to see whether or not Moon Dragon's in this thing. The point is, uh, he wants to kill Ronan, but instead he has has Gamora. So he th G Gamora. Gamora? The point is he has Gamora, so he thinks that will suffice. So he tries to kill Gamora, but Quill, uh, Peter Quill, is, is like, no, hold on, you could kill Gamora, or you could wait till uh, Ronin comes to get her, and then you can kill Ronin. Now, he doesn't say it like that. He says it with uh, expressions, you know, metaphors. And the point of that is to show that up oh, uh, this Drax might be a tough looking badass, but he has this funny character quirk. And that quirk character quirk is that he doesn't understand metaphors. Oh, 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 oh so funny, oh I'm laughing, whatever. So anyway, uh so so Rocket has a plan on escaping the prison, on having this epic uh, prison escape. And I'm like, ooh, are they going to go down a uh, shit sewer a, that's the size of a bunch of football fields? No, that's too disgusting. And also it's space, what the hell. In, instead, uh, Groot uh, takes away the battery supply, which is in an oddly convenient place to take it out of, and causes the, uh, and causes the entire, it causes the entire prison to malfunction, and I'm like, wow, that was really easy to do, Groot. So anyway, they get their plan going, they, uh, they, they incapacitate the guards, a, they all uh, they all get to the uh, center of the the center of the prison, which is this big ass watchtower. All five of them get in there. Uh, Groot needs a, a Groot. No, 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 no not Groot. A Rocket. Rocket needs needs a prosthetic leg from an amputee only because he wants to he only to uh, make fun of like oh ho, ho, I took away a an amputee's prosthetic amputees are stupid he <laughs> making fun of the handicap so anyway they escape by uh, turning off all of the gravity and oh oh, oh gravity like me graviton oh ho, ho. That's the stupid connection. The point is they, they, they take away gravity. And uh, and apparently this is like the main control center. And I'm like, really? You put the main control center just up above the cafeteria where all of the prisoners are? That was stupid. But the point is uh, they activate these little hover bots. You know, like these security bots. And, and it causes the security bots to lift up the watchtower and make it like it's a rocket. And they escape from the uh, cafeteria and make it to the uh, ship dock. Is, is that what you call it? The point is they, they get to the ships and they go to uh, 
and they go to the Ravager ship, which is owned by the Star Lord. But Star Lord said, "Wait a minute! I have to get my Walkman from that big blue man." Thank you for the Walkman. So anyway, they escape from the prison. The five of them, the Guardians, but they're not called the Guardians yet. Yeah, they they, they have yet to be called the Guardian. That that comes later, I guess. So anyway, uh, so anyway, the, so they go on this uh, the, on this mission to um protect the orb and keep it and and try to get it to uh, Yandu so that Yandu doesn't beat his ass and also so we uh, also so that Ronin doesn't get it but wait a minute I thought Gamora wants it for for Ronin which is here's the thing though turns out she doesn't she she's actually a good lady why don't they gradually reveal that then Nope, they just abruptly say it, like, as soon as they're in the prison, she's like, Nope, I'm not actually working for Ronin, I'm actually a good, good hero. But, okay, whatever, I guess we don't have to have that story arc of whether or not trusting Gamora. Whatever. So anyway, first they have a pit stop to this uh, casino, where uh, Rocket and, uh, and Drax are gambling. And the point of this is for character development. That's right. We get to develop Gamera and you have this uh, will they won't they with Star Lord. And we also have this character development moment for Ra Ra Rocket because he's very sensitive about being called a raccoon and he's really sad because it's like they didn't have to make me. I didn't want to exist. God damn it. It's like, oh, they're making us care for this raccoon. So anyway, uh, after that bit of character development, it's uh, back to the plot of the movie. We have to go back. Back to the plot. Do, 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 do. So, anyway, uh, they make it to their destination. And that destination is nowhere. Wait, they're nowhere? Yes, they are nowhere. But where is nowhere? It, it's at a giant ass school. And this school is really, 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 really big. It's this huge ass school and inside this gold is an entire damp city, and they go inside of this city. You've never seen a more disgusting place than that place in Star Wars that I forget the name of. You know, the one with Jabba the Hutt. Anyway, the point is, they're now in this, um, the hustle and bustle of the big city. The big Skull City. Skull City? So anyway, at Skull City, Nowhere. Yes, they are nowhere. Uh, so anyway, Sco City. Uh, they're dealing with all the hustle and bustle, but but Drax is impatient as hell. He 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 he's like, God damn it! We, I want to see Ronin. Jesus Christ! Why can't we find Ronin? I want to find Ronin and and. And Gamora is like, is like, patience, Jesus Christ. We're not giving this orb to Ronin. We're giving it to this weird pink lady. And this pink lady pops up and she says, The Collector will see you. And, the, and we get to be brought to the Collector. Who the fuck is the Collector and why does he sound so familiar? Well, he was in, uh, Thor the Dark World. He was in the after credit scene that made everyone completely confused because they're like, wait, who the fuck is the who is the fuck is that guy? Well, we get to find out one year later, right now. But uh, but apparently uh, the Drax doesn't care. He he goes off doing his own thing, and that own thing is like is like is like hey. Uh, the he, uh, I want to get Ronin, so I'm just going to call him up. So he goes to a uh, 
alien payphone. Meanwhile, the other characters go to the collector's collection, which is inside of nowhere. It's this big ass uh, warehouse, and and we look at his collection, and we see all of this these unique things, these these things that he has in his collection, and, and he collects these rare. The, the, these rare items and whatnot. I can't help but notice he has some actual beings in there. Yeah, he also has live people, like this little Russian space dog who uh, has mental powers in the comic books. But here he doesn't, he doesn't show off his mental powers, so apparently he's just a regular dog. Anyway, we also see a Chitauri, we see a dark elf, we see a slight glimpse of Hada! Do not speak his name. Okay, I think I took another nerve. So we get to see the collector, and he's basically like Liberace in space. And you uh, and he collects all these, you know, objects and, and, and the living beings. You already said that. Yes, I know. I'm just trying to reestablish that. So anyway, uh, so Gamora gives him the orb so he can, per so he can identify it. And he opens it up and he reveals to them that it is one of the Infinity Gems. Ah. This is what you were talking about earlier, about how this connects to a future storyline involving the gems. Yes, the Infinity Gems. There is six to be exact, and if you put them all together, you have complete control over the universe. And these gems are really powerful as fuck. We've already seen three so far. We've seen, um... The Tesseract, which is the Cosmic Cube, th 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 that's being kept in uh, Odin's treasure room. We've seen the Aether, which is that uh, black smoke thing from Thor 2. That's at the Collector's Place, but they never mention it. Yeah, that was weird. I guess it was an afterthought. But the point is, now we've seen the third one, and that's the... Uh, actual gem that's inside of this orb. What about the, that blue thing in Loki's staff? Maybe that's the fourth one. We don't know yet. The point is, hopefully we'll get all six by the time the uh, third Avengers comes up. I'm calling it. That's the, in that, that's the infinity thing. I have to take some water. This, is, this, this review is going on longer than I expected. Ah. Too much to talk about. It's because that's good as that good of a movie. So anyway, uh, but then uh, the collector's aide, the pink girl, is is corrupted by the uh, by, by the gym. She 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 sees sees it too um too tempting to her. She she wants to use it to uh be free from the collector's uh wrath. She, she wants to be her own boss. She wants to be her own independent woman. So she grabs the Infinity Gym as, uh, while at the uh, same time, uh, the Collector is showing them a PowerPoint of this giant ass, uh, warrior who, who used to use that Infinity Gym to, uh, destroy a planet. And to the untrained eye, someone would be like, Oh, is that Galactus? No! 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 That's not Galactus! That's someone else! That's a different giant, big-ass, godlike character in the Marvel Universe. His name escapes me, but the point is, That is not Galactus! That is a Cimmerillion... Cimmerillion... Centurion... The point is, that's not Galactus! So anyway, uh... So anyway, the pink girl grabs the gym, but it's too much for her. It's too powerful. She can't handle it. So she explodes, and it causes this big-ass explosion that causes 
the entire collection to explode. Everything is exploding. All the damage is like, oh no, the collector's collection all ruined. Oh, I bet a lot of I bet a lot of the uh, people that this movie was geared towards uh, are are very sympathetic about that. You know who I'm talking about. It's stereotypical comic book geeks. So anyway, uh, so the Guardians uh, uh, leave the Collector with his uh, fucked up collection. They leave the place with the uh, orb with the gem inside being like, okay, we know someone just tragically died. Uh, well, not tragically, but gruesomely died. But whatever, we need to get back to the plot. But... Ah, uh, to their disconcern, oh no, Ronin and his troops arrived. Yes, it turns out Drax really did call for uh, Ronin to show up. And and Drax is like, yay, Ronin is here, I, now I can fight him. And I'm like, Drax, if you wanted to do that this whole time, then why didn't you? Why'd you wait till now? Convenience. Whatever, you stop being a negative Nancy. You asked me, so I answered. Good point, good point. So anyway, uh, so while Drax and Ronin are duking it out, uh, the Gamora and, uh, and, and, and Rocket and Star-Lord get into these mini, uh, pods. And, and they take the pods up and, and, and they go flying and they have this epic, epic, uh, aerial chase with, with Nebula, and, and they're chasing them, and they're chasing them around the giant ass skull, but then they, but then they leave the skull, they go out into space, and, 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 and Rocket is like, is like, oh no, space, these things aren't meant to be in space, and then Nebula uses her ship to explode ne Gamera's, and now Gamera is outside of the ship, and she's floating in space, and the uh, orb is outside of space, and it's taken by the giant black licorice, and, uh, and Ronin, to make matters worse, throws... Drax into this big fountain of urine, and he escapes in the giant black licorice, taking the orb, and Nebula goes to, and they leave. Great. Now Gamma will die. Ah, I love death. Shut up. Stop being so, uh, obsessed and morbid. The point is, it's really sad. The rocket is sad. Star Lord is sadder because he could have hit that. And but but, but then Star Lord decides to uh to to be a hero. So he uh, goes out of his ship and he uh, puts his helmet on in uh on Gamma on Gamora. That makes her less sexy. But the point is, she is no longer freezing up. Now he's freezing up, and here I am going, you, you know, if this was real life, they wouldn't, this wouldn't be how they would die. They would, like, immediately explode. Whatever, this is a movie with a rock raccoon and a talking tree. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I think you're accepting the movie. Shut up. I want to get to that scene I want to talk about. Okay, okay, shut, okay, okay. Be patient, we're getting there, we're getting there. Another gulp of water. Mmm, water. It's nature's Gatorade. So anyway... So anyway, Yandu shows up. Yay, Yandu! And he takes... Um, and he takes Star-Lord and Gamera, leaving Rocket to go back to the giant-ass school. Great. Where, where was Yandu this whole time? Well, he was dealing with Mr. Porcupine Face, you know, taking his, uh, little ruby frog, and showing Yandu's weapon of choice, of course. Now, in the comic books, Yandu is a part of the original Guardians of the Galaxy that are from the future. 
But it doesn't seem to be implied at all that he's from the future in this movie. Not only does he not have his giant ass fin, but he also doesn't have his weapon of choice. And his weapon of choice in the comic books is a bow and arrow. But I guess they thought, you know what, we already have Hawkeye, so let's give uh, Yandu a different weapon of choice. So what do they give him instead? Why, a floating, sp a little floating spear that he can control by whistling. Hooray! I wish I could whistle so I could control a little spear. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to whistle to control my penis. That was stupid. Yep, that sums up this uh, video series. So anyway, uh, Yandu is very mad at Quill. Very mad. Very disappointed. But Quill say, but, but Quill uh, negotiates with him, and he threatens to kill him. And, and Yandu is like, oh, that's my boy. That's the boy who I abducted from the people who abducted him. Oh, by the way, they, they, they kind of like, uh, you, you, you know, they establish, they, they establish how uh, Yandu and, uh, and Starlord uh, met really, really quickly. There's no flashback, it's just like, well, like one sentence, like, oh, by the way, uh, I discovered you somewhere and whatnot, and whatever, I raised you. So anyway, um, Yandu uh, tells uh, Quill that that um, that that as that as long as uh, Quill gets them the orb, uh, Yandu will let Quill off the hook. So, so uh, Quill has to go back to his ship, which we see we where um, ship. Where uh, Racket Raccoon and uh, Groot and Drax were trying to threaten the Ravagers. Like, oh, we're going to kill you if you don't bring us our friends. And we're going to only give you a limited amount of time to do it. And so, and so this leads to this big argument inside of the ship between the five characters. Like, God damn it, we are arguing because, arguing because an arguing superhero family is relatable. This is fantastic this is Fantastic Four 101. God damn it. This is Fantastic Four principles. So anyway, um, so after all the arguing, they uh, decide to uh, come up with the right plan on uh, on uh, retrieving the orb from Ronin. And th this involves not only the Ravagers helping out, but also Nova. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. They're going to uh become an unlikely pair team up with Nova, and so they call a uh, John C. Wreckit, Wreckit Riley, who is uh you know tending to his little garden. You know, John C. Wreckit Riley's garden. La la la. So anyway, uh. So anyway, uh, Star Lord sends him a message about how he's not a dick, and um, you know, dick jokes. <laughs> and so, so uh, Wicked Riley passes on the uh, message to uh, to Glenn Close, and Glenn Close is 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 like, God damn it! I don't have enough time for this. The, that giant Twizzler is about to destroy Xandar! Wait, how did we get there? Well, when, um... Well, you see, Dark Lord, um... When Nebula gave the orb to uh, Ronin, uh, Thanos was on Skype, and Thanos was like, Okay, good, now give me the orb so I can destroy Xandar. And, uh, Ronin is like, Nope, I'm going to use the orb to destroy Xandar myself. And, and, uh, and Thanos is like, God damn it, I'm ending this Skype call. So it's the last time we see Thanos, everybody. And, uh, you know, like I said before, we'll, we'll see him again. Don't worry, don't get your panties in a bunch. Or your undies in a bunch. Or your woman's underwear, even though you're a man, in a bunch. The point is, uh, the point is, Ronin, uh, in you opens up the orb, takes 
the gym and puts it in his hammer to make it Thor's hammer. No, not really Thor's hammer. It's that is powerful, but the point is, it's it's potent. So he's using that to destroy uh Xandar. And apparently, the only way to destroy a planet is if you put it on the planet. So he has to actually go there. So this is where the uh, this is where the Guardians ambush the giant Twizzler, along with uh, along with the with uh, Nova Corps. With no wait, no wait, sorry, Nova Core, Nova Cure. Yes, the giant Twizzler. Yes. So anyway, uh. <laughs> So anyway, um, so anyway, a th four fifths of the guardians go inside of the giant black tw twizzler, except for a except for a uh, rocket who who is controlling the ravager ship, and he's joining forces with all of the Nova Corps, and all of the Nova Corps uh, form this giant ass net that uh, wraps itself. Around the giant Twizzler of Doom. Speaking of the Guardians, have they ever called themselves Guardians yet? Well, yeah, you're right. We haven't heard them call themselves Guardians yet. Oh well. So anyway, at this point, uh, Drax is all like enthusiastic now. He's like, you know what? I thought you were a bunch of asshole jerks, but you guys are my friends. I love you, man. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. And then he, and then Groot shows off more of his whimsical wooden powers, you know, like little like these little um these little glow in the dark things come out of his hands and it's like Groot, what can't you do? Sex? Anyway, the point is, uh they make their way through the Twizzler where they find <gasps> The level boss, the the boss of the levels. Video game reference. I don't care about video games. Yeah, I do. Kind of. Not enough to play them. But the point is, I acknowledge the video games. Anyway, they deal with the bosses, and those bosses are Nebula and Korath and Ronin. Fight! So anyway, uh, so G Gamora takes on Nebula and she beats her up, and and she gets all squished by by uh, by Batista Drax, who uh, shoots a cannon at him, and, and then Drax has to deal with he has to deal with with the with Korath. And finally, we get to see Korath in the movie. He, he's kind of had to, had to take the shaft, it seems. Shaft. So anyway, while uh, so anyway, while uh, Drax is taking on uh, Korath and uh, and and Nebula is all fucked up her body, and then she gets all re, and then she gets like she 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 takes yoga and she cracks her body back into shape to keep fighting Gamera. But then she's like, no fuck this. I'm getting out of this movie, so she hightails it out of there in a ship. Bye, Gamora. Good luck. See you in the next movie. It was good to have you in this movie, but bye. So anyway, uh, so anyway, uh, so after dealing with all of the, you know, putties, you know, the putties from Power Rangers, the, the, the Sakarans. They deal with them. Groot has this Hulk Loki moment where he beats up all of the, uh, beats up all of the the uh, guardsmen, and 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 he looks into the camera and smiles, and it's like, oh, they're trying to recreate that scene from the Avengers where where uh, we where uh, Hulk ragdolls Loki. Isn't that adorable? They're trying to recap recapture the magic. Well, it worked, apparently, because I got the same exact uh, audience reaction. So they did it! They... They made a carbon copy! So anyway, they... So anyway, they're about... So anyway, they finally get to the final boss. It's the final level, everybody. The final boss. Ronin. 
and Ronin has his big ass hammer that has the infinity gem in it, the purple one, and he's about to beat their asses, but then in comes Rocket Raccoon inside of the giant rocket that that crashes into Ronin and crushes him and but, and so there's all this rubble, this big, you know, crash scene inside of the black licorice. But this causes the black licorice to malfunction. And now it's going to crash into the Xandarian city. Oh no, Stanley's going to be destroyed and he never got that gate. Good. I hate those Xandarians. You hate everything. Correct. Anyway, the point is, as the uh, Black Twizzler, the giant Black Twizzler is about to crash into Xandar, uh, Groot decides to form a giant ass ball. And he puts everybody, he makes the ball around all of his friends, protecting Star Lord and Batista Drax and Groot Diesel, and Rocket Cooper, and Rose, and uh, whoever plays uh, the Gamera inside of this giant ass uh, wooden wall. And but 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 then Rocket wakes up and and says, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, Groot, this might kill you somehow." And Groot is like, y -y -y and, "And Groot says, we are Groot." Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You didn't establish that what this means. Oh, that's right. I forgot to mention. During the whole movie, he could only say, I am Groot. That's all he could say. I am Groot. And uh, so basically, he, he's like a slightly more articulated uh, Pokemon. But now he says, we are Groot. Oh, it's, it's the Iron Giant all over again, except this time it's the Wooden Giant. You know, same voice actor, same principles, whatever. So anyway, the, the giant Black Twizzler crashes into Zandjar. It, 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 it tr crashes into the city. Still not as much damage as Man of Steel. <laughs> you, you got that right. So anyway, it crashes into the city. I could have sworn I saw a, uh, I could have sworn I saw a Six Flags get crashed. That was weird. Well, it's not there anymore if, there, if it was. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh no, Six Flags is destroyed. So anyway, uh, we see a lot of onlookers who go to the crash site. And amongst the rubble is the Guardians. They're safe. They were saved. But they were but 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 Groot was not safe because he's in pieces. Because he died. He was destroyed. And, and Rocket is sad because that was his only friend. Even though Batista Drax said they were friends. But then, out from the rubble comes Ronin. He's got, still got his hammer, and he's still alive. But then we hear the Walkman play, and it's that song I mentioned earlier that was annoying. But apparently, it's not annoying for uh, for Peter Quill because he starts dancing to it and singing. Oh, child, things are gonna get better. Oh, child, things are gonna get all peachy king. Anyway, that's meant to be a distraction, because then Drax and Rocket shoot him with that big cannon we established earlier. And that, and, and that is directed towards Ronin, and that makes him drop the uh, Infinity Gym, and, and, and in, in a, flu, a slow motion sequence, Peter Quill goes and grabs the Infinity Gym. Oh no! Good. He will explode just like that pink lady that was associated with the Collector. But no! It doesn't destroy him. It only nearly destroys him. It makes his it, 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 it makes his his skin all purple and broken apart. But then, but do you know what happens? Uh, 
Gamora says, Take my hand! And as you remember, the, the, the Quill's mom wanted, her to, wanted him to take his hand, and he didn't, and she died. So, of course, this means, well, I already stood up one dying person. I guess I'll take the hand of Gamora. So anyway, he takes Gamora's hand, and now she's all broken apart in purple. And, and then Drax takes Quill's hand, and he becomes broken apart in purple. And then Rocket takes Drax's hand, and he becomes broken in well, pardon purple, and they're all breaking, and they're all purple, but somehow, somehow, because they're all together, they manage to uh, withstand the power of the Infinity Gem, and they survive, and the explosion happens, and then there's this big, big, uh, purple tornado that's happening, and then they direct all of that huge, big, raw power towards Ronin, and destroys him. Ronin is dead. God damn it, I was going to have him on the show. Haven't you had deceased members on the show before? True, you're on the show and you're dead. Don't remind me. Sorry. So anyway, Ronin is exploded. The, uh... The, the, the tornado is gone. Uh, Yandu had his own subplot where he destroyed all of the Sakarans with his, you know, floating whistle spear. So anyway, the Guardians survived. They, uh, they put the, the gym back in the ball. And then Yandu shows up. And it's like, okay, give me the orb, goddammit. And, and Quill is like, okay. Here's the orb. I totally didn't switch this out with something else. So he gives it to Yandu. Yandu goes back into his uh, Ravager ship and lets Quill, you know, do his own thing. Like, whatever, you're all off the hook, whatever. And uh, he mentions to James Gunn's brother, like, Oh, by the way, uh, we're going to set up... We're, we're going to mention uh, Peter Quill's father to set up for a sequel. Bye! So anyway, uh... But... but Peter Quill doesn't hear this sequel set up. So he, he's taken to the, uh, he's taken to Nova. And Nova cleans them up, uh, makes them all good again. Uh, Glenn Close mentions to them that uh, the reason why uh, Quill withstood the power of the gym is because he might, he, he, he's half of a different alien. And it's a rare breed of alien, something rare and unique. And, and so... And so I wonder, wait a minute, why doesn't Quill just ask her what that is? Nope, don't say it. it it's, it's just, it's just, it's more set up for the sequel. Oh, how do they know for sure they're getting a sequel? Because the date is already set. 2017. Also, this movie is currently making a whole bunch of money. Yay, money! So anyway, uh, so anyway... They clean up the other members. They give them these nice blue suits. Uh, Rocket has taken one of the trees and put it in a little potted plant. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of like having an urn. Really creepy still. So anyway. So anyway, every, so anyway, the, uh, the Guardians are pardoned for, they are pardoned for their crimes. And John C. Riley is like, is like, he, he, he's all like, Thanks, Star-Lord. So thanks for protecting me and my family. I have a pink family. I'm pink in the comic books. But I, I think the actor who played me didn't want to put on the makeup. So he just gave me a pink family. Anyway, uh, thanks for uh, saving my pink family. So anyway, the Guardians go back to their recreated ship. And they finally are called the Guardians. Because Ronin called them the Guardians. Yay, they were named by the villain. Ah, how could he name his own enemies? Well, that's what happened. And he's dead. Shame on him. He deserved it after helping them by naming them. The point is, uh, they're all good now. They're happy. Uh, Glinkos put away the orb. It's, it's, in, it's in a high high-tech security place. It will be stolen by Thanos eventually. Yep, gotta get to that Infinity Gauntlet storyline, of course. So anyway, um, 
So the so the guardians fly off to, into the sunset. Uh, Star Lord decides to finally open up that uh present that was established earlier in the movie. It it, it turns out that Yandu was not given the orb. Of course, duh, die. You went to big shock. Turns out he uh, was given a little troll doll. Did it? Because Peter Quill is from the 80s. Yay! He's like 80s. He's like 80s Dan. Take on me. Da -da -da -da. Anyway, so anyway, Quill just fi finally decides to open up that present. And what is it? It's another mixtape. Good. Now he can listen to new songs. Yes, new old songs. Like a uh, Jackson 5 song. And as they fly off into the sunset, we get an after title scene. After title scene? Yeah, well, usually they show like the uh, first part of the credits and then an after credit scene. But, the but they show the first part of the credits in the beginning. So. Instead of doing an after credit scene, they do an after title scene. So they show the title again, and then they show an extra scene. And and that scene is uh, Drax the Batista filing his uh, his knives. You know, because even though he avenged his family, he, he still wants to kill people. So he's going to kill Thanos, probably. So anyway, he's filing his knives, and he's right next to that... Uh, to that stick that we saw earlier uh, was of Groot that's in a pot now. And you know what it turns out? It's tur it turned into a little baby Groot. Yay, Groot respawned. So, it happened in the comic books all the time. It was inevitable. It was predictable. Even I predicted he would die and then come back as a sapling before I even saw the movie. Yes, that was to be expected. But the point is, little Groot is dancing to the Jackson Five movie uh, music. But then, but then, uh, Drac looks at him, and, and and then Groot freezes. And then Dr Drax goes back to uh, fighting his his daggers. So so Groot goes back to dancing, and and it's like, come on, Groot, don't be ashamed of liking the Jackson Five. They're awesome. Whatever. So so anyway. That's the movie. The credits. So anyway, there's the credits. The movie is over. Woo! That was a big ass. Wow, that was a big ass review. That was really long. But the point is, point is, it's over. Water. Good water. Well, that's the movie, everybody. I hope you had a good time. Listen to us review it. Now, let's give our overall rating for you. Okay. So, Dark Lord, would you rather... Now, wait just a second. Well, uh, okay. You forgot one crucial detail. A detail I have been looking forward to addressing this whole video, I have been waiting and waiting for you to get to it. And by golly, we are going to talk about it. Oh, yes, I remember now, of course. There's another after credit scene, an actual after credit scene. After all the credits are done, there's one more scene. Because there's an after credit scene for all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. First there was Nick Fury, then there was uh, the bar with Glenn Talbot, the, no, no, not Glenn Talbot, Talbot uh, Thunderbolt Ross, then there was the one with George Hammer, then there was the one with uh, the, the Tesseract and the old crazy guy, then there was the one with the Avengers Traitor, then there was the one with Thanos and Swarma, then there was the one with the... Uh, with uh, Bruce Banner as the therapist. Then there was the one with uh, Collector and the Ice Monster. Then there was the one with uh, Hydra and the Twins and Winter Soldier. Now there's this one! And what is it, ladies and gentlemen? What is it, lady boys and girls? What is it? Well, the 
last movie before the first Avengers movie was a trailer for the Avengers. So naturally, this probably made everyone think, Oh boy, the next movie after this one, after Guardians, is The Avengers 2. Which means we're gonna get a teaser for the in the after credit scene for The Avengers 2. Oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait for that teaser. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be... Nope. No. It was not a teaser for the Avengers Age of Ultron. Nope. It was something else. Please, tell the little boys and girls at home what that stupid, stupid, stupid teaser was instead. You, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Dark Lord, what? You seem to have changed since we started this review. Oh, really? How have I changed? Well, at first, you were like you were possessing the body of that scientist guy, and you know what you you you, you and but but then you gradually changed. You got all creepier and weirder. And now you're this big giant scorpion thing! That is because I have shedded off that stupid skin of the Dr. Walter Jennings, and I have shown you my true form. I am the Dark Lord. Behold my true form. Yes, you were some kind of giant scorpion thing. Yes, now. Tell the people what the after credit scene really was. Okay, okay, Mr. Giant Scorpion Thing. I'm going to explain it. We see the Collector. And he's really distraught about his collect collection being fucked up. He's got a big bandage on his head. He's depressed. And then, and then the little Cosmo dog, you know, you know, the Russian space dog from earlier, licks his face. Yes, and what happens next? Well, uh, we hear a voice coming from somewhere. We don't know who it's from, but the point is we hear a voice. And it says, hey, what are you licking his, why you let him lick your face for? That's gross if you ask me. And who did they reveal was saying this? Are you sure you can handle me saying his name? Yes, I have prepared myself for you to say his name. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Say it. Say it. Howard the Duck! Ah! Ah! Oh, I see. You're one of those haters, aren't you? Yes, I despise Howard the Duck. I hate him with every fiber of my being. He is a horrible, you disgusting, putrid, horrible... Organism. And why do you feel that way? Because he thwarted my plans of destroying Earth. Yes. And here's the thing, uh, Dark Lord. Uh, while you, good sir, might hate, are, are, is very hateful of the Howard the Duck cameo, very irrationally, might I add. At least you have an excuse. Really? What is my excuse? Well, your excuse is that Howard killed you. And, 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 and you know, that's an understandable reason to hate someone. But do you know what is not an excuse? Do you know who does not have an excuse for hating Howard? Oh... Everybody else! My god, ever since they revealed this uh, post credit scene, everybody has been really 
unreasonably pissed at it for some reason. They've been pissed. They've been angry. They've been saying like, oh, Marvel's been getting lazy. This was stupid. It should have been something to set up the next movies. They shouldn't have wasted it on Howard. I hate Howard. Shut up, everybody. If you despise this after credit scene, then guess what? I have some advice to you. Take those that Groot out from up your ass. Take it out of your ass because it's way up your ass right now. Oh, really? Yes. People are unreasonably hating on this on this after credit scene. Well, guess what? I have some news for you, buddy. No. Don't say that Marvel is getting lazy. Because this movie has proven that they are not lazy. They put a lot of effort into this movie. They put a lot of money into this movie. But you said it did not give a fuck. Yes, but I mean, what I mean is, they put effort into not giving a fuck. They put a lot of effort into showing that they don't give a fuck, is what I mean. And sometimes, it's great to not give a fuck. But you know what I mean by not getting a, giving a fuck? I mean not giving a fuck about what kind of caliber people expect. They expect the, a certain amount of seriousness. And guess what, everybody? You're not going to get that ex seriousness out of a movie that has a talking raccoon and a tree. They're just trying to have some fun with this. They're just trying to have fun. And this was fun. This whole experience was fun. It was nothing but fun. It still had some emotional moments, but it wasn't too much to weigh it down. Overall, this was fun. It was exciting. It was great. It was happy. It was even, dare I say, campy. Because they knew that this was a stupid idea, and they ran with it, and embraced it. And and do you know what's the most stupid, stupid, weird thing that Marvel has ever had? Howard the Duck. Yes, Howard the Duck. So they embraced that and they put him in the movie. Yes, but people still hate it. It's probably because people were expecting a big setup or something. They, they were expecting like, oh, have Adam Warlock in here. We want Adam Warlock. But no. Marvel thought, you know what? We're holding off Adam Warlock in favor of having this Howard the Duck cameo. Because they wanted some... Because they knew that this movie was already lighthearted. And it is. So what makes the difference if you add Howard the Duck in there? I mean, sure, everybody hated the original Howard the Duck 1985 movie. But guess what? It's a cult classic now, and they're acknowledging that. And they're like, hey, some things are so bad it's good, so let's put in this good thing, Howard. So they acknowledge their history, because guess what? Rocket, it, for a time, Rocket was not the most powerful atomomorphic animal from Marvel. It was Howard. And now that Rocket has taken his place, they want to res pay respect to Howard. So they are. So they're putting Howard into this movie out of respect for him. Out of acknowledgement that even though the movie really sucked back in the 80s, they are still willing to bring it back up and acknowledge it. And show like, we're doing so good. We're embracing our kooky, weird, sometimes hated side. So you know what, audience? Here's Howard the Duck. Ah, I still despise it. Yeah, you and everyone else. But the point is, not everyone hates this because a lot of people liked it. Because it kept in the same tone as the whole movie. Kooky, weird shit. You know, talking tree... Talking raccoon? Why not a talking duck? Ah, whatever. See, you can't even have a rebuttal. And I bet the other people can't have a rebuttal either. So we need to embrace our past and look on to the future. 
But let's also acknowledge what came before, and that's what they did. By acknowledging Howard the Duck, and putting him in the cinematic universe. So guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Howard the Duck is in there, whether you like it or not. And I, for one, like it. Because they embrace their silly side. And this show is all about silly Billy Bo Billy shit. Good shit. Not the bad kind of shit. Not the bullshit kind of shit. I mean, good shit. The shit. That's the kind of shit I like. The shit. Ah. Whatever. You know what? Howard's expression during that scene pretty much sums up all of the way we should view this. I don't give a fuck. And neither should anyone who's angry about the haters. Don't give a fuck about them. Howard's in it whether they like it or not. So, Howard Duck is in the MCU, everybody. Yay! Yeah, people are probably just mad because they think there's going to be a movie involved. Guess what, everybody? That's probably not the case. This was just a f this was just a fun Easter egg. <laughs> Get it, egg? Because it's Howard. I digress. The point is, this was just like a fun in joke. Like, hey, there's Howard the Duck. They're not saying like, oh, we're going to make a movie with him. They're just saying like, hey, remember Howard the Duck? He's here. Deal with it. Ah, I don't want to. Then get the fuck out. Get out. If you can't deal with... If you can't deal with Marvel uh, loosening up and not being so, you know, stick stuck, stuck up your ass like the normal trend that superhero movies seem to be following right now. Like, oh, we have to be like Dark Knight and Watchmen. Then get out. You're not welcome here anymore, Dark Lord. I'm regretting ever bringing you back. Fine. I'm leaving. Bye! But I'm just kidding, people. I like it when people have different opinions from me. And I'm sure he'll probably come back. Bye, Dark Lord! Bye! Because I don't have a stick up my ass like some people who hate the Howard the Duck scene. I like to be loose and flimsy, like this movie, relaxed, and doesn't care what people think. And that's what you gotta do sometimes, not care what people think. I just made this movie, a, I just made this review a whole lot longer than it has to be. Holy shit, I think this review is as long as the movie. Oh well. Wait a minute. But, I'm supposed to get my overall rating, and, and, uh, the giant scorpion... Thing is not here anymore. Oh. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Dr. Jenning? You're awake? Yeah. Oh, that was weird. What what happened? You, 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 you uh, were possessed by the Dark Lord again. Oh, no, not again. Yep, it happened again. And then he got out of your body again, and then you were unconscious again. But now you're awake. Yeah. It happened all over again. I'm back to my normal self. Yeah, that was weird. Wasn't your body all damaged and mutilated, and now it's as if it never happened? Yeah, that also happened in the Howard the Duck movie. That was really weird. So you're okay with bringing up Howard the Duck? Yeah, I've, I've come to accept it. Accept it. And so should everyone else. What are you talking about? Oh, that's right, you didn't see the movie. But, 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 uh, even though you haven't seen the movie, let, let's just give our overall rating. But how, how can I do that when I haven't seen the movie? Well, uh, I'll give you two options. What do you think you should do, well, uh, Dr. Jennings? Should you watch this movie. You mean Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes. Should you either watch Guardians of the Galaxy or be taken apart and then put back together with robot parts and then go traveling in space with the talking tree? Hmm. 
I think the second one is too complicated for me. So I'm gonna... I guess I'd watch the movie. Good. Because I would do... I would watch this movie again too. Because it, it touched me in the heart. And... And taught me a good life lesson. Be loose. Be free. Don't... Don't be too tense or stressful about how others think of you. Just do your own thing. If you think it's awesome, good for you. Don't care if people think it shouldn't be to a certain caliber. Just because they think they've seen something better than before. You know what I mean? Like, if you think that what you're doing is worthwhile in your heart, then do it, man. Unless it's drugs. Or murder. Or rape. Mainly rape. Don't do that. Or uh, stealing stocks and bonds. That one's dated, but yeah, don't do that either. So that's the review, everybody. I'm gonna lay down. I'm feeling a little dizzy after this whole episode. Yeah, this was tiring. But not tiring enough to uh, sing a little song. See you again next week, everybody. Next week, we're going to talk about another talking animal superhero film. Okay, here I go, singing. Howard the Duck. Yeah, come on and do it. Howard the Duck. Woo! Or you can screw it. Howard the Duck. Woo! I really like it. Howard the Duck. Yes! It's really fun! <laughs>